seeing I'm going to be painting on the screen with green, you know, I got to paint the stripes on the fender there. These stripes, will, the, what you see in black will be green on the fender. I, this is the vinyl that I'm going to use. It just comes in a roll and you just feed it through the vinyl cutter. It'll cut your pattern out. And I just want to see, I'm going to stick this to this. This I painted yesterday when I painted that. And I want to make sure it's not going to peel this paint off. This is just paint directly on the steel, no primer, no nothing. So if it doesn't peel this off, it won't peel that off because that's primed and prepped properly. I'm going to try a bit on this green because this has dried a little longer and i got to sand this out because there was a little, some minor paint reaction there. So I'm just going to give this a quickie 400 and sand when I paint green next I'll respray that. That's no big deal. But I'm just going to stick this on and I'm going to try some Rust-Oleum Red and see if it reacts with this cream because if it doesn't then I'll cut all a trike about and all a little like I want to um, put on this let me get that, get that wire off I want to put on this stop, slow, run, fast on this and little letters in red and the control knob is going to be red and then I got a decal. I'll show you the decal I'm going to put on it. That is the decal that I'm going to put on it. I think that'll look pretty neat. I'll probably put it right about right in there somewhere so it's, you know, centered. But I think that'll be kind of neat on there. It's a clear decal so the color will show on there. It'll just look like black writing on there. But I just think that's kind of neat. And, uh... So, you know, that's going to go on there. There's no ends, its, or buts about that. But anyway, let me uh, stick this on here and see what happens. Sometimes getting this stuff to peel off is a bit of a nightmare. Here we go. There's a bit over here that's peeled. So you can kind of see what it is now. It's just an adhesive back vinyl, and I'm just going to Stick this on here. Good enough. And then I'm just going to spray it with some red rust oleum and see what happens. That is the paint that I am going to try it out with. You can see I stuck some of this vinyl to the green also. I'm just going to leave that stuck on there for about an hour or so. I'm going to paint this and let the red get to a nice tack state because you want to unmask before it's well it's still kind of soft but not not like super you want it to where it's like almost dry to the touch so when you peel it you don't get a cracked edge or chipping or anything you don't want it to peel it totally once it's totally dried but we got you know those holes aren't perfect but we'll see if we get bleed under or what you know I just want to Test it out and see how it goes. I'm not going to put it on real heavy. It's raining out, so I'm going to have to stand in the door to, to spray it outward so I don't get overspray on things in here. But let me go give it a shot of paint and see how it looks when I'm done. Yeah, this is the paint. Sorry, I forgot to... In the paint shaker, doesn't really show you well, but this bond's the plastic, so that should work good on the throttle knob because I can't find a red throttle knob so we'll just paint it. Well there is absolutely no reaction and it painted on there nicely. I'm going to let that tack up and then I might put a second see it's still too wet to, to um, you know you got to let it get to where it's like when you touch it it feels like masking tape but it doesn't stick to your finger. If it sticks to your finger it's too wet so I'm going to let that tack up then just put on a light second coat and then we'll peel it off after it's tacked up a bit more and see how it looks. But I'm happy to see no paint reaction. That's a second coat and that's really red now. I kind of liked it with just one coat with a little bit of the cream showing through. So I don't know. I, we'll peel that off and see how it looks. I think it's going to look good. I just wanted to make sure there's no paint reaction and so far there's not. 
So I'm happy that maybe this will do the lettering. I'll just do it with this Rust-Oleum Red. And then I'll use the the green for obviously the, the fender. So that'll end the seat and the frame. Yeah, I got a bit of green to... A lot, little bit of a lot of detail painting that's going to be time consuming masking everything especially masking that part of the frame because that's kind of a funny it's just going to take a bit of fuss and uh this this will be no big deal to put the you know i just put the thing completely over the top and, and done that'll be no big deal to put the lettering on that or the the wheel caps, there'll be no big deal to put the lettering on them, too. And um, I had a decal, but it was too big. I think I showed it in a past video. But it was too big here, so I'm going to actually print one on white vinyl like that. And then shrink it down from what I have, and then just stick it on there, because I think that'll look nice. That's definitely going to work. I peeled this kind of hard you know just kind of tugged one corner and it stretched as I was peeling it and that's why I got those little dots plus it still sticks to my finger I was impatient and peeling it off but for the most part the edges are sharp you know other than where I stretched this and still kind of wet paint these weren't these two of the holes weren't punched out very well I was having her I, that one punched pretty good but these two didn't punch well with my hole punch and I hit them several times with the whole punch. That's why they, they're they kind of messed up. But this, where I just cut it with the scissors here, and that wasn't a clean cut on the end either. The, the cut actually went a little bit beyond the opening. So that's also probably why that's there. But everywhere else, I think once this is cut out on the vinyl cutter, That'll be fine, and I'm happy it didn't pull. This is unprepped. It didn't pull the paint off. That's going to work perfect, and I'm going to pull this now. Yeah, all good. No, no pulling of paint, and everything's good. So we're going to go ahead and paint the red and the green using this, and I think that'll look really nice so everything's going to be done on this black vinyl except for the decal that i'm going on the very front there because that's going to be printed with you know with ink on it all right let me uh let me go work on making some cutouts i'm not going to be able to do this painting today because it's like i say it's actually raining today it's supposed to rain tomorrow it might be friday or later in the week next week before i can do the painting but we'll get it done that was just one coat of red and i'm totally happy with that it's not you don't have the thickness look like you do with the with the two coats and it that red really covered well yeah there's a few little parts where it bled out but that was because again this was just chopped those scissors once it's done on the the vinyl cutter you know because you can see where I missed there and missed there and it just you know that's just the way it is when you hack it out with scissors and plus this is dirty so you can see dirt and bumps and stuff so there might have been some dirt where some of those were blood through but I think overall that'll be totally fine this stuff will work great I was just getting the bolts ready I'm gonna paint all the bolts flat black and then I'm gonna paint the I'm not going to paint the uh, the sleeves. They're aluminum, and it's hard to get paint to stick to aluminum, so they're just going to be silver. But I thought I'd just paint these flat black just because I think it would look a little better than being shiny. Just so if you do see them through the wheel, you don't, you know, they don't. Though I suppose flat black, if you see that through there, you're going to see it much more than if it was white or whatever, or even that color, but... I'm just going to rattle can them, Rust-Oleum, flat black. And that's the flat black paint I'm going to use. I sanded out the paint on the wheel. That paint is really thin. Yeah, I could easily take it down to bare metal in no time. I mean, there it's bare metal. But anyway, it's sanded out, wiped everything down with lacquer thinner, and I'm going to 
zinc chromate prime everything, the spokes and all, because everything there I want to be green. And I don't think those spokes are stainless steel, let me see. Yeah, see the magnet sticks? That means it's not stainless steel. A good, good stainless steel has a high nickel content, is corrosion resistant or will not corrode basically, and the nickel is not magnetic. A stainless steel should be non-ferrous. In other words, a magnet shouldn't stick to it, but like most of your refrigerators and appliances and stuff that are supposed to be stainless steel, they're not stainless steel because refrigerator magnets stick to them. They're a high chrome alloy steel, stainless steel, which will rust eventually, not a high nickel. And I suspect that's probably what this is. Anyway, let me uh, get it primed up. There we go, all primed up. Yeah, it's a little bit of a chore painting spokes and stuff like that, but I think that'll look really nice. And again, why I didn't take the tire off the wheel was because I don't want to scratch the wheel putting the tire back on. So I just let the air out of it so I could squeeze it down and tape right in into it. And then I could, I pulled the valve stem up as high as I could, taped it, and then shoved it down in so it wouldn't get overspray on it. But there we go. That is ready for some green paint like that. I got to sand that pulley out and then... uh when I paint, like I say, the green there and there, we'll uh, paint this and that pulley again. I didn't show this. Yeah, I painted the throttle control knob red. I did it when I was uh, doing the paint tests for that. So that's going to look nice on that with the red recoil handle and the red grips and red foot pegs and all that stuff. It's going to colors on this thing are going to look just super nice. I really like that red. I just masked off on the seat so I can paint that edge green. I'm going to paint it green all the way around on both sides there. So that is ready for some green. I sanded that out so that's ready for some green. That's primed and ready so next I'm going to work on this and then the fender and I'll show you as I go. I'll show you what I used to this is what I use to mask. This is for like sharp, it's a vinyl, vinyl tape. And I also have um, this, which is a fine line tape too. This is what I used when I painted the Chevrolet letters on my 69 Chevy Custom 10 pickup that I frame off or stored. If you ever go back in my videos and look and see that truck with the Chevrolet script, it looked really nice painted the green over the white and that's what I used and this is basically how I did it. I just taped it and then masked around it and then just gave it a spray. It came out really nice and it's held up really good. So I just want to show these cutouts. So this is the vinyl. This is going to be so to speak I'll, the negative. I'll stick this whole black thing on the on one of these and then I'm just going to paint it with red rust-oleum and then I'll let it dry and peel these off. I saved the REO that I pulled out of there just because I might want to stick them somewhere in the garage. But yeah, so this one's all cut out. So I just get a small, let me get a sharper pick. This one's got, let me just sharpen this one, hang on. This pick had adhesive all over it and wasn't that sharp. I did the other one in the house with another pick. So you can kind of see how I'm getting the letters off there. Just And this, is, this stuff here is almost the same as like this tape. So I'm hoping it works. I just try and catch a little bit of the ladder without hitting the, where I want to paint so I can... And then there will be another layer, it's like a white 
white film that I'll put over this so you can peel this off here and have the film over it and then you can press it and work it on the, the metal really well and then you peel that white film off and then you paint it and then you can peel this off. There we go. So those are the real logos for the wheels. I'm going to try and get this stuff. I, I'm at a standstill until I get everything painted. So that's why I want to get this. This will be green. These will be red. And I got to make a, I'll make a half piece for this. And then I'll just tape around here and here. And then the rest of the frame back because I'm going to paint this whole round piece. And well, you saw how it was in the. And you'll see how it looks when I'm done. All right, let me uh, continue with what I'm doing here. This is what it is uh, cut out on. I know I'll get ass, so there you go. This is the software. It's called Silhouette Studio. And you can that's what you set up, and that's the cutter. And I'll show you when it's cutting. That is the font for this. And we're going to turn it on this, and this is what it's what you stick the vinyl to before it goes in the cutter. Looks like the center of the R is missing on that one. It got stuck on something, so I'll probably have to use this one. Which is a good thing printing out too, I guess. But can, do they show up in the camera? Yeah, I think they do. This one I'm going to have to cut out again. The, the A, the center didn't come out of it. Or came out of it. And this one, the R and the P and the O. So I'm going to set in the A. So it's going to cut a little deeper on the next one. You can adjust how deep it cuts for the thickness of your vinyl. So we'll adjust that and try it again. You can see how it's got the stuff stuck on there there we go the fender and the seat are taped and that has the tape on it. So I got to finish masking the frame and then we're going to go out and do some spring. That's what that's going to look like. That will be all green up in here. I got to tape these off and the rest of the frame. Well, I think I'm ready to start mixing paint. Got this, 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 that, and that ready for green. And they've been my holdup. Once I get those painted, I can start assembling stuff I can do the red another day. It's supposed to rain the next couple days. 
so I'm kind of under the gun. I don't want to have to sand this. And if I wait a, another day or two, I'm going to have to sand it. It's right at that point right now to where if I let it go any longer, I'll have to sand things to get it stick. Get the green mixed up and then we'll get some paint sprayed. There we go. Hopefully it turns out good. We'll be stripping it and repainting it if it, if it doesn't. And I got the rim painted. And I repainted the pulley, which this time came out absolutely perfect. I'm going to put this video up. I want to show you what I've been doing on the trike about. I think you'll get a big kick out of it. And then I'll do another video once it's together, or putting it together and riding it. But I had to get this done, what I did now, before I went any further. I couldn't assemble it or do anything because I didn't want to have to tape everything off. But anyway, I got the paint on for that. And it's going to have a real thing in the front here once the green's dry. The green has to dry a while. And then it's going to say trike about. You can see the the green on the fender just came out spectacular. Yeah, I'm so happy with that. It came out nice. And it's going to say trike about. I'll show you. I got the things ready to go right here. That's how... That's the paper backing, and that's like an adhesive to help put that, you know, so you don't lose your little inside things there. But anyway, yeah, that's the seat. I painted the edge like it was originally white. I painted up to this edge here, too, just to, because I thought it would look good. I painted the Rio on the wheels now. Um, this one, I waited too long to demask and it took some of the red up, so I had to touch it up with a with a little touch-up brush, but it looks fine. I'm not gonna sand it out or redo it or anything. This one's just came out absolutely perfect. And then this, of course, for the engine, you know, the screws are there, so it's not gonna sit down on here like it should, but that'll be on there like so. And I got a decal for that too. I'll show you the decal. I put a, sanded that out and recoated it. This time it came out perfect, both sides. I, I did both sides, so this side actually looks better than this side, so this will be the outboard side. Of course, the engine that was frozen into a snowbank in an estate sale that I restored, and the wheel, which I painted green. And uh, I think that would look nice with the green with the contrast with the fender and stuff. And I got a decal for here for the engine. I'll show you the decals. I think I showed this decal before, but this one will go on this part of the I'll have to take this off to put the decal on and then when that's off without the spring tension I'll take this metal plate out and buff it and then I can put that decal on but then I got another decal here let me show it to you too. So I got this that I thought I'd put on the control handle thing right about there. I think that'll look quite nice on there. I don't know if I showed this or not. This. This video has been made over a number of days again because I'm just, you know, I got to wait for paint to dry and then I had to make the templates. And this I just masked. You saw with the tape I used, I showed it. This I used the vinyl cutout to get that so it had to have a nice curve to it. You know, I, I don't think I could have freehanded it and had it look good. So that's... That's good. These, the Rio letters were supposed to look like they're just painted on with a brush at the factory. Like somebody just went like 
that and so on and so forth. So that's the way Rio did things. This is in the Rio font too. And this is typical of what the Rio mowers had on them, usually on their deck somewhere. And I'm gonna, like I say, I'm gonna stick it on this. I think that way, you know, it'll be in view on this side and it'll confuse people. They'll be like, I didn't know Rio, if, you know, to, to remember that Rio made lawnmowers. They're the largest manufacturer of lawnmowers in the 50s. You'd have to be like my age or older to remember them. I remember them because I had a Rio runabout I used for years in the 70s to, to mow. And so I remember them well. But anyone that's probably not 65 or older probably won't really remember Rio lawnmowers. They're the biggest maker of lawnmowers in the 1950s. But anyway, we got, we're got we getting this thing to where it's wrapped up. I'm going to take the air cleaner off too. It says to take it and soak it in oil and then let it sit out and drip. And I'm going to do that before I really ride it much. I don't want to ruin the engine. It's got new rings in it. I, the valves and guides are all in really nice shape. The engine was in good shape other than the rings were worn out in it. And I put new rings and a new used piston in it. All new gaskets and seals. So the engine should be ready to go. I might, this, these spark plugs, these old ones I have like this, the tip of them, this part here was all corroded on them, every one of them, and I just cleaned this one off the wire brush. But I'm, every now and then the engine coughs, and I'm wondering if it's that spark plug. So I might put a, I got a whole ton of spark plugs from that I've bought over the years in estate sales, and I'm pretty sure I have. These are like the ones that that's in it right now. This I got, I had five of them, and that's one of them, J11. But I also have these. These are J11 also. That's what this real engine. It say J11 on the. I guess it doesn't stand, but the spark plug, take my word for it, it's a J11. So if it's still coughing, I'll change the plug. It, it You could hear it in one video when I went to take off, you could hear it pop out the carburetor, and then it took off and ran good. And uh, another thing, too, in my parts hoard, I found this. Let me show you what all I found for Rio engines, as long as I'm making videos here. I think this is it. Anyway, let's say, yeah, so I got, I had brand new points condenser. I had three sets. You know, I used to buy these back in the day and they probably have had these since the 70s or so and you could still buy Rio parts. But I have three sets of points and condenser brand new in the box. Pretty sure this is for this engine. It looks like it. And then I got this. Let me unbox it. But th let me show you the box first. Anyway, I got this because I had a real lawnmower that had no spark and I thought the coil was bad. And actually got this at an old mower shop and I, I don't remember. I might have paid five or ten dollars for it. It's just, it, I bought it back probably in the era when I bought theirs, those. There used to be a mower shop in Dave, you'll remember it, Duffnose or Defano's, however you want it. It was at Wolcott in 32 Mile Road and kind of up in the Romeo area. And they were closing up and going out of business and they had some Rio stuff left and I bought it all, everything they had because I like Rio's. Let me show you what I got in here. Yeah, this was a bit of fuss to get unpackaged, but yeah, I had a real mower that I thought had a bad coil. And I got this at uh, Duff Nose, and turned out it was just a bad condenser on that engine. But yeah, it's, uh, and again, I think this is the correct one for this engine. It says it's a Wico X9692. And it's got brand new points and condensers. So I actually have four sets of points if you include that one. 
and I'm going to very carefully wrap that back up the way it was. I found this stuff when I was scrounging in the basement. I was looking for something for it. I don't remember now, and I found these in a box with my small engine parts, and I thought, yeah, awesome. I knew I had them. I just didn't know where they were because I remember buying them all those years ago and never really using them. And I've, like I say, I've had probably four or five Rio lawnmowers and half dozen Rio engines over the years, and they've all been excellent. But anyway, we'll uh, wrap this stuff back up. I'll put this stuff back away, but if I need to put new points in it, points and condenser, I have a brand new set, but I think might be the spark plug, I think is the issue, not the, because the points in that engine are really in nice shape. They're, they were not, you know, chewed up or anything. So anyway, I just thought I'd show this stuff. This is the other side of, of uh, no, actually this is one of these, I do believe. It just hasn't been cut out. But yeah, I just uh, printed it out like this and then just wrapped it around and put the joint on the bottom. And uh, I think it came out really nice. Really pleased. Oh, and I buffed out that chrome for for here this little doohickey for the and i buffed the the bolt up too so it's all nice so that'll be chrome because it's going to have shiny fasteners and stuff on it so i figured i might as well have that chrome that way i didn't want to be putting a wrench on this and chipping the paint and i might take that bolt out and strip the paint off and buff it like that too i think that was originally chrome plated that doesn't look like a steel bolt that's been buffed that actually looks like chrome plating and I think that was chrome plated too so I'll get that out and th throw some paint strip or I'll just I'm not going to bead blast it because that, I, I think well maybe I will because it was already bead blasted this was too so I'll just give it a quick bead blast and or maybe I'll leave it I mean the well the wrench did kind of mess the paint just slightly but anyway, we'll, uh, and this I got for oil drain for the engine. So I got to drain the oil out and, you know, this will be kind of somewhere in here. And hopefully that pipe's the right length. If not, I got a couple more laying around somewhere that are a little different lengths. And if we can get all that figured out, I put the, just kind of haphazardly put the wheels together. I got to put the pulley on this one. I had to. Give it another coat of paint. That's why these are the these are the uh, the problem I was having was the little letter inside there, the little thing in the O and the P and the R and the A was so tiny I couldn't keep them in there when I was peeling out the letters. The before I put that this film stuff on them, you gotta see you gotta have them like that. See how those are? Well, the ones on here were so tiny. So these ones are larger, and I had to make these ones in the file a little larger, too. Just to, so I'd have the center of the O and the P and the R and the A. That came out so nice. It'll look good. I'm just thrilled with this really here. Yeah. That just came out fantastic. I couldn't be, I was kind of wondering if I was going to get bleed through. I blew on a really light, light, light coat. Very, so light you could, it barely covered the cream. And then I blew on another really light coat, about the same that covered the cream a little bit more. And I did the four coats doing it like that, but I did do the final one. A little wetter so I wouldn't have orange peel in it so there is no orange peel in that green whatsoever anyway that's that's going to be it I'm going to end this video so you guys can see what I've been doing on the trike about I'm going to have to let this stuff dry I'm going to let this dry a couple of probably until Sunday and then I'll paint the trike about on it and I can start putting the engine and the wheels. Now that this is painted, I was waiting to paint that because I didn't want to put it all together and have to cover everything up. The seat, I just took off to paint the green. But 
Thus, yeah, I didn't want to take a chance on getting overspray on anything. That's why that was my hold up on putting it together. Now I can put it together and I can paint that, put that red on there. That that took me, you know, I used uh, Rust-Oleum. That took me like 30 seconds. I missed it on two really, really, really light light coats. The first one, you could still see the yellow through them. The, this one, if you really look, you can almost see the yellow through, not quite, but I didn't want that paint too thick on there. And uh, it just, just really came out nice. Anyway, I'm rambling on. So if you like the video, if you like what I'm doing here, definitely hit the like button, share the video. Anything you can do helps. Really appreciate it, especially share the video. I mean, any one of you that are my age or older that remember Rio's real lawnmowers or if you like old power equipment or anything, if you know anyone that's into that kind of stuff, send them the video so they can check it out and hit the like button while you're at it. And also, if you uh, like my channel, that 348 engine icon that pops up there will subscribe you. And thank you for watching my video.